Since the very early days of me making videos on this channel, Lagoon's Primordial has been in the works. To say I was excited for this ride is a massive understatement. I've been watching this thing get built for several years, and the amount of hype I had for this attraction was very high. In this video, I'm going to give a detailed rundown of the full Primordial experience, while also sharing my thoughts on every aspect about it. Let's start out when you enter Primordial's official queue space. Right before you pass under the entrance archway, you'll see a themed sign to your left with information regarding the attraction's story and details on it. This is the first time in the queue that you are presented with the story of the attraction. I'm a big fan of theming and story-based rides, so I'm very impressed and happy that Lagoon created a original story for this attraction. The story is basically that you're going on a journey to save a mythical kingdom from an evil army. The kingdom is home to two characters named Dragnor and Astrodir, who are a dragon and an owl who bring day and night to the kingdom. Your goal is to defeat the evil army and free either the dragon or the owl, depending on which ending you get, but we'll talk more about that later. After passing under the archway, you'll pass in between some buildings that have some nice theming. The exteriors of the buildings in the queue look nice, but I do think they could be themed a little better, especially the building that is supposed to look like a castle. It looks kind of unfinished, and I hope the park has plans to make it look better in the future. I don't want to sound overly negative though, because this is by far the best themed queue in the park. Next, you'll enter the pre-show building. This room is very well themed. At the front of the room, you'll see a fully animatronic character named Queen Asdra, who is explaining the journey you will be taking in more detail. The animatronic is fairly simple, but it achieves what it's meant to achieve. Behind the animatronic is a massive projection surface that displays visuals to go along with what Queen Asdra is talking about. I will say I was very impressed with this room, and I never thought in a million years that Lagoon would build an attraction with a pre-show featuring an animatronic. My only complaint about this room is that the acoustics are not the best. When there's a ton of people waiting in line, the voices of everyone in the room echo like crazy, and so does the audio from the animatronic, which makes the pre-show very hard to hear. I feel like this is a problem that could be easily addressed, so I hope Lagoon is working on it. After exiting the pre-show room, you'll pass by the double-sided lockers, then head up a long ramp to the station. Right before heading into the station, you'll pass under the ride's lift hill, which was super loud when the ride first opened, but it seems like the park did something to fix that, so it's not quite as loud now. One thing that a lot of people probably don't notice in this part of the queue is that there's actually a spot for a very large waterfall on the mountain that isn't actually functioning yet. I don't know when the park is planning to get it working, but it looks absolutely massive, and it's going to be an amazing spectacle when it does eventually get working. Once you enter the station, you'll first pass through a room where you are handed your 3D glasses, and this room is unfortunately pretty unthemed. I feel like a lot of the queue was maybe meant to have more theming, but the park just ran out of time. Hopefully they can theme out some of the more bare areas in the queue over the off season. After getting your 3D glasses, you'll enter the main station room, which looks absolutely amazing. This is by far the best themed area of the queue. The entire room resembles a medieval village, and it looks great. All of the building facades look very detailed and look fantastic. The show lighting in the room is also great, and seeing this room really made me wish the exteriors of the queue buildings looked as good as the ones in the station. Like the unthemed portions in the queue, I'm hoping the park adds a little more detailing to the exterior of the queue and station buildings during the off-season, or some other time in the future. Next, you'll board the ride's trains, which consist of two cars with one row with four seats across. These trains are equipped with onboard audio, interactive blasters, and they're able to rotate 360 degrees depending on what is happening on the ride. When boarding the trains, they are rotated 90 degrees facing the loading platform. The way you load this ride is very similar to how you load on Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, if you've ever ridden that. Once you sit in your seat, you'll pull down the lap bar with the blaster attached to it. They are very comfortable and are completely identical to the lap bars on Bombora. You'll also see a small screen located in front of your seat with your score for the ride on it. Once your train exits the station, the trains will rotate into a forwards facing position and head up the lift hill. Once at the top of the lift hill, you'll pass in between some rock spires. Then you'll pass through the outdoor roller coaster portion of the ride, which consists of a curved drop, a helix, and a drawn out curve into the mountain. You'll then enter the main show building for the ride. The entrance into the show area is pretty impressive. The first room you'll enter has a ton of fog and some practical set pieces meant to portray a swamp sort of area. 
After the transition into the show area, you'll pass by the first interactive screen where you'll shoot spiders. At the end of the screen, the lizard and wolf characters that are guiding you on your journey direct you into the next scene. These characters do have names, but honestly, I don't remember them. In the next interactive scene, you'll shoot wizards of some sort. One thing I do want to mention while I'm on the subject of the interactive screens is that if you do want to get the most points, you'll want to look for the shields in these scenes. If you shoot those, you'll get a lot of points. Anyways, after this scene, your ride vehicle will rotate backwards and you'll pass by a physical wizard figure before passing through the ride's second roller coaster portion. This is a figure eight type curve that is pretty much completely in the dark besides some small flickering lanterns. After this portion, you'll pass another interactive screen where you'll shoot flying creatures of some sort. And after this interactive screen is when the ride actually gets pretty interesting. You'll pass by two static figures of a skeleton and an orc, and whichever one of these figures is lit up tells you which video ending you'll get in the finale scene of the ride. If the skeleton is lit, you'll get the ending where you save the dragon, Dragnor. If the orc is lit, you'll get the ending where you save the owl, Astrodeer. Although, this isn't the only type of variation you'll get at the end of the ride. Besides the alternating video endings, you'll also either get a drop track finale, a backward slide track finale, or a forward slide track finale. You can also get all of these finales with either the dragon or the owl ending, and because of all these variations, this means there are six different possible endings you can get on this ride, which provides great reroutability value. But getting back to where we were in the ride, after you pass those static figures, you'll pass over the switch track that directs your ride vehicle to either the tilt track or the drop track room. You'll then pass by one more interactive screen before entering the finale room. Both finale rooms feature a huge wraparound screen that really immerses you in what's happening on the video. After you free either the dragon or the owl, you'll either drop vertically or you'll slide backwards or forwards. While all of these endings are fun, my personal favorite is actually the forward slide. The first time I experienced it, I was very surprised because it was a sensation that I hadn't really ever experienced on a ride before. The drop is also pretty fun, and I've heard it could be the tallest drop track in the world, but we don't have an official confirmation of that by the park. After you exit the finale room, you'll pass by the scoreboard, which shows each rider their final score along with an on-ride photo. You'll then pass by a screen showing either the wolf or the lizard character, congratulating you on saving the kingdom. When you finally return to the station, your ride vehicle will of course once again rotate 90 degrees in order to allow for your departure from the vehicle. You'll then return your 3D glasses and head down a long exit ramp leading to the gift shop. And that ends the primordial experience. Now that I'm done with the walkthrough of the ride, I want to share my thoughts on it. Although this is a fantastic ride, I do want to bring up some of the main issues I have with it. First of all, I wish the plaza for the ride was a little bit more immersive. Some extra buildings and rock work hiding the parking lot from view would have been nice. I also wish some portions of the queue were themed a little better. Some more detailing on the exterior of the queue buildings would be cool and even just some simple stonework would be nice on the blank gray walls of the queue. As far as the actual ride goes, I think the interactive game mechanics need to be adjusted just a little bit. Since the train has two cars, the front car gets a big advantage over the back car because they get to the screens first. This could be fixed by making sure an equal amount of enemies appear in direct view of both the first and the second car. I feel like the ride vehicles also pass some of the screens a little too fast. And this could obviously be fixed by slowing the vehicles down just a little bit in the interactive scenes. And I don't know if this could actually be possible, but it would benefit the interactive portions of the ride. Besides those issues, I think the ride is amazing. The fact that Lagoon pulled off an immersive attraction of this scale is absolutely crazy to think about. The amount of thematic immersion this ride achieves compared to any other attraction at the park is unparalleled. The interactive aspect and the ending variations also give Lagoon an attraction with a ton of rewritability value, which is something that they definitely needed. Overall, this attraction is pretty much exactly what I wanted it to be, and I'm so glad Lagoon went the extra mile to create a great themed attraction like this. If anyone who worked on this ride is watching this video, I want to thank you for making this ride a reality. It truly is amazing and one of a kind. If you enjoyed what you just watched, consider liking this video and subscribing so you don't miss out on any future content. Also consider following us on social media and purchasing something from our merch shop, which is linked in the description. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos here on Coasters and Stuff.